Let's now uh, talk about what's going on. The big story, of course, being the quarterback trade. So anybody outside of Chicago, all we can do is watch some of the news reports and listen to some of the stations. And, you know, these are the rumors and this is what's going on. And how could you only get this? And what, you know, it looks like Cable Williams now the guy. So I guess the first question I have to ask you, Mark, is um, the, the, the compensation. What exactly went on there? Why did they only get what they received in the package. Well, I, look, a lot of people are pointing at Ryan Poles that he waited too long and there was some great market out there that Poles missed. I personally do not believe that. Uh, Justin, as talented as he is, I mean, look, three years in the league, hasn't thrown for 3,000 yards, hasn't thrown for 2,700 yards. He's Now, he was not supported well in year one and two, and he was you know, supported better, but not – in a premium way in year three. So if you want to be optimistic about Justin, which I am at least some, you know, there's a lot. And Mike Tomlin just said recently, there's a lot of meat on that phone. And I agree with him, but there was no team in the NFL that wanted to give up any significant draft capital and rework their offense around Justin. And when Mac Jones went for a sixth round pick who had similar numbers to Justin, not the talent, but numbers are very comparable. I was like, this is a huge problem. They're getting nothing for this dude. And then Atlanta, who was, you know, one of the landing spots, they lucked themselves into Kirk Cousins or luck or whatever. Kirk Cousins chooses them. I was surprised. I thought he'd stay in Minnesota, decided to go to Atlanta. Well, there goes a landing spot. And then I thought that Pittsburgh would be an option too. He's there. Now they liked him enough, but, they were able to get their hands on Russell Wilson, who they like more. Um, so the, the league ended up telling you that he's a backup. Um, at least that's how he's being viewed as right now. And so uh, the Bears made the best deal they could possibly make. And I, what was interesting about it, because I was speculating, look, if you're going to get nothing, which in essence they're getting, then keep them. And yeah. uh, and. You know, if Caleb fails or gets hurt or whatever, but the Bears very clearly did a ton of, they talked about it, did a lot of research on how this would go. And they did not like the dynamic of having both of them there. They wanted to make that, that room as Caleb friendly as possible. So that's what they did. And I, I get it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's very strange to me that this is going on with these young quarterbacks because, uh, they, you know, and I'm talking about guys like Fields and even a Zach Wilson, that this is such a starved league for quarterback, competent young quarterback play. Why does it seem that these general managers around the league are just, nah, I can't give you this or that because why? I mean, how, you can't turn this quarterback. If you, if you trade for him, you can't turn this guy into a really good player. He's got experience now. You should have a good if, – if you trade for him, you're, you're obviously saying to yourself, I've got a good coach that can coach him up. I don't get that. It's like, you know, it's, that's what surprises me about it. Right. Well, here, uh, look, Justin's a first-class guy. Justin works his ass off. So there's a lot of – you know, to, to your point, there's a lot of things to like there. Um, the other side is the next time Justin B. Fields throws a ball with anticipation before a receiver comes out of his break – It'll be one of the first times. It's not what he does. And the NFL is telling you a lot of things here. Luke Getze, who Bears fans couldn't stand, and I would sit there like, you really sure it's all Getze's fault? Well, Luke Getze's the offensive coordinator of the Las Vegas Raiders. He got another job in five seconds. Yeah. No, he, had, he had to explain himself to the Raiders and other teams as to why everyone was saying such negative things. And he'd be like, well, look at this and look at this and look at that. And then the Raiders hired him. Yeah. Darnell Mooney, who caught, who had 400 yards for the bears last year and has had an ankle injury, got 26 million guaranteed from Atlanta. Yeah. He, he the, the, the leagues, they like the offensive coordinator. They like the receiver that didn't get the ball that, that, that they thought should get. You know, it only takes one here. I'm not saying that everybody thought this, but there was one team in the NFL that clearly looked at what was going on and said, that dude should have a lot more catches. He'll get him here with Kirk. By the way, we're going with Kirk, now with Justin, and we're going to pay him. So 
There is a there is the NFL is telling you he's a backup. Yeah. We like the OC. We like the wide receiver who the Bears are casting off because that guy's a lot better than how he performed there. And we're putting that on the quarterback. So sure. I, I mean I think the NFL is wrong. I think Justin yeah. can get there. But that but they are we'll the, they, they, the NFL has spoken pretty loudly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I think they're wrong on 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 both those quarterbacks I named. So I think that if they land in the right spots, which it looks like at least Pittsburgh uh, has got themselves a much better, bigger upgraded coordinator. So uh, we'll see how that works out for for Fields. Um, all right, uh, I'm gonna pop up here uh, for the last few minutes. We have uh, the depth chart um for the bears because i have some questions i want to ask you as i'm doing that uh, i might as well ask you about the oc job so waldron comes in and he was with seattle the last several years um the, the one thing i noticed that was a plus is that there's no big change in scheme philosophy because um if, if, if this is the stats were very similar as far as how little waldron used 11 personnel was similar to how Chicago used 11 personnel last year. Uh, but in general, what do you think about the, the, uh, the move to get Waldron in there? So, I mean, the bears, I think their biggest problem with Luke Getze is that they felt like he had one way that he wanted to run his offense and that he, you know, he preferred a quarterback that was more uh, statuesque, if you will. And that it was never really a great fit with Justin, even though, they hired him to be Justin's guy, but I guess they learned that along the way. And then you look at Shane and multiple quarterbacks in Seattle. And then, you know, his the big gold star on his resume is what he did with Geno Smith. So I think they look at him as somebody because they weren't a thousand percent certain which way they were going to go at the time. I mean, I think they were probably pretty damn close that they were going to go with Caleb. But I think they also wanted some a guy with a flexibility to – you know, build a team around the strengths of the team, not just not just run his offense. And I think if they look at Shane as somebody who has that ability, um, and you know has has a, a demeanor that is going to connect well with a lot of guys, and especially Caleb. So I mean, Caleb was a big part of this. But I I, I do look at you know his history, uh, the McVay tree, the Belichick part of it, everywhere that he's been. Um, and success that he's had, unique success, that they were super excited to get him, uh, despite the fact that Jackson Smith and Jigba came on the CHGO Bear Show and basically said that good luck with that because he didn't have a great experience as a rookie. But these things happen. Not every player is going to love every you know coordinator. So, um, but I think they're super excited that Shane said yes to them. Okay, um, and I, I also should ask you uh, about the fan reaction now we, we knew it was split when we talked in january about whether to keep fields or not now it's the deal's done throw in the fact that all of a sudden now and, and you knew this was going to happen it happens every year with these top quarterbacks that are going to go in the first round with the first pick for like months that the warts start to come out and then are they really warts or is the the mark is everybody just throwing dirt on the kid and it's just too much and it's just overreacting how are the Bears fans taking to all of the kind of strange news that's coming out about Caleb Williams right now and whether or not he can be the, a leader of men? So that, that's an interesting question, Greg, that you bring up because, you know, oh, my God, he's painting his nails. Oh, my God, he's kind of clapping back at, at, at social media. Um, you know, this is not – I mean, Justin was the most down-the-middle, kind of robotic, uh, just nice guy – Great dude, but you know, wasn't going to say anything controversial ever. But just using Twitter uh, as my guide on this one, there are a lot of people like saying, That's my quarterback. Exactly right. Don't care. How many games is he going to win is all that matters to me. Like, there is, and we had, you know, one person chat on the show today saying, like, I, you know, I was in my feelings a ton with Justin, but now I'm all in on Caleb. Like you can feel the movement coming here. And look, you hear Ryan Poles talk about him. I'm having a hard time finding someone that doesn't like him or even love him. Yep. Like there is, you know, the, the whole narrative out there that he's not a great guy in the locker room. The Bears have used a megaphone to let people know that that's not what they have found out in their own research. So 
His mom owns a nail salon, painted his nails. Who cares? <laughs> uh, is he going to win games or not? Yeah, and, right. You know, and, and as far as the leadership stuff goes with him, too, it's, you know, he gets rave reviews. And Paul said another thing. He's like, look, you know, NIL money, it's changing things. So he's got, he can afford to take his offensive line out for dinner and that stuff that he did. Uh, you know, and look, when you're, you got millions in the, in the bank already as a, you know, 21, 22, 23 year old. Sure. It doesn't feel like a huge deal, I guess, to spend, you know, I don't know, uh, $500,000 on a dinner, but that's still a pretty damn nice gesture to get that. Yep. E- e- even if the money's flowing, uh, as a, as a youngster. So I, I there, there is, uh, I think there, the comfort in Chicago for Caleb is growing, uh, quickly. And that, that 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 happens. Uh, I, I we've been around this game a long time to know that uh, he's zero and zero, and he's their new shiny toy, and they're going to give him a shot. Um, yep. Okay, so um, with a couple minutes left, I have to ask you because we did the, and I'll have a link in the description on this channel of where you can check out our uh, first few minutes uh, that we had regarding top draft needs, and you talked, you you mentioned the center position. Now, they signed both uh, Shelton and Bates. Shelton was the starter last year. Bates was more of a backup. Do you see Bates as the starter? Bates is going to be the starter, uh, unless something goes dramatically wrong. The Bears loved him a couple years ago. They tried to sign him from Buffalo, didn't get him, and then they gave up a draft pick to get him. Shelton's a, a more of a flyer, backup, $1 million uh, you know, guy versus okay. – I mean, Bates is making closer to four, a little over four, actually. So, I mean, not to make it all on money, but I, I, sure. I've got on pretty good account that they like Bates more. Um, they bring in Swift. So, is this uh, once again? It's a, it's a committee room, right? Swift, Herbert, and Johnson. Uh no, I think this is more of the Swift show. I'm not it saying is. that. Yeah, I mean, I think you could sort of look at it, perhaps a little bit of thunder and lightning with Swift and Roshan Johnson, uh, but. I, I guarantee you Khalil Herbert is not feeling very secure about his position with the bears right now. He okay. didn't hear from Shane Waldron for a long period of time. Um, I, I, this is, you know, they made a significant investment here in Deandre Swift. So I, I I'm, I'm not going to call him a true number one in an old school running back, but I think he's going to get the primary, uh, a primary amount of the touches. Okay. Uh, on defense, uh, I wanted to ask you about the linebacker position. So um, are, are they set there? Uh, are, are they happy with Sanborn? And Because they did add the kid from the Chargers, but I'm not sure if that's just a depth piece where they like something more out of that kid. But do you think they're set at linebacker? Yeah, I mean, Tremaine had a, had a good year, not a great year. And TJ Edwards did have a great year. And yeah. Sanborn was on the field a little under 30% of the time. Uh, and I think they they look at him as you know talented enough to do a whole lot more than that. But um, you know, if we're talking about the Bears drafting a linebacker with any of their four uh, draft picks, I'd be I'd be extremely yeah. su- I'd be extremely surprised. Uh, and, and you think uh, Bayard uh, is a very? Do you think uh, he's a solid replacement for Jackson? I do. They are super high on him, and you know he's he's got a little sense to get to the football. Is you know, he's had some big years. I, I understand that our interceptions are there's a large part of that that is right place, right time, and whatnot, but he's been pretty consistent. And and Eddie uh was getting old, and I, I don't like Eddie, but he, he, he certainly wasn't going to come up and hit anymore. Uh, but he was a great guy in that room. But the Bay- Bayard's never missed a game in his NFL career, the Bears did not expect him to be available, and so they were they were pretty uh pleased that to, to be able to run into that level of experience and leadership uh skills if you will as well all right and uh last one and that is uh, everett was signed uh commits there uh you talked about bowers uh on the other video uh because he might be available if the bears pick at nine um but it doesn't look like to me that the bears need a tight end am i wrong you're you're not you're not it would be uh it would be a huge surprise, but just a lot of people like Bauer. So I just, I'm just throwing it in there as a, as a 1% chance. Um, and I know that like they, they like the talent there too, but um, look, if you combine, if you do all, if you do the combination of things, if you combine Everett and Komet's numbers, you're at about 1200 yards received, 1200 yards receiving. If you combine Keenan Allen and DJ Moore, you're second in the NFL, you're second in the NFL of all tandems last year. 
So the offense, and if you add one more piece in there, yeah, Bears should be scoring some points, man. They really should. So we'll see. And they got to make sure that the, they have the offensive line. That's why yep. that could very well be their top pick. And do you think that will be their top pick if they stay at nine? Uh, my my guess is that Adunze is there and they take him. Let, let's get that on record. Okay. Uh, that's that's my guess. But uh, if if Alt's there, now that'll, that'll be tough for them to say no to. Because then you got bookend, you got a bookend tackles and, and right and Alt. That's that's that, that's pretty good right there. But you know they'd have to move up Braxton and they like Braxton, so I, I'll <laughs> I'll go with Adunze. It's it's my best guess. I. Greg, I'm reserving the right to change that before April 25th. <laughs> well, they'll have to check out CHGO Sports on YouTube. Um, and uh, we'll have a link in the description for that. Mark, I know you got to run. I appreciate your time. And I can't wait to talk to you after the draft. Greg, thanks for having me. See you soon. Appreciate you.